I wanted to come in here and see you and give you a little bit of a pre-birthday present. You get a look at my eyes since I'm flying back to Abu Dhabi tomorrow and can't be here for your birthday. So I want to say happy birthday and Thank you. do all that. And I appreciate you sitting down with me and talking with me a little bit because I've been, you know, having keratoconus and having been battling through it for so many years, been on the internet and see some of the keratoconus groups and all of the despair and the dismay and, you know, I'm blind and it's like, why? You know, there's, it doesn't make sense to me that people aren't encouraged by other doctors or other doctors referring him to you to get over this blindness. So, I mean, you know, there's a big stigmatism or a stigma out there that says if you have keratoconus, you're going blind or you're going to get cornea transplants, which I didn't. And I've got severe, as you diagnosed, okay. severe keratoconus used multiple different techniques on two different eyes and I'm sitting here seeing 2020. So there is hope, but people have to know it and it, the word needs to get out and about. Sure, Jack, I mean, I appreciate that to me. I love to uh, teach and share what I know. To me, it's a pleasure that so many of you see 2020 despite extreme keratoconus and that to without glass and contacts, in fact, I have no concern with you flying back tomorrow to Abu Dhabi, long flight. Um, I do, I am aware of these forums, though I'm not actively involved as you can tell, but a number of my patients have told me that they've gone on some forums and stuff and they've been told no, and uh, my patients are trying to tell them that we are seeing without glasses and they've been shouted down with, we do transplants or we do contact lenses and that's the only way out. So the way I approach keratoconus is, of course, there is absolutely no need for despair anywhere at all. In fact, not only there's hope, there is a very bright future. Uh, what I did for you and what I do for all keratoconus patients, you cannot guarantee 2020, of course you cannot. But I've been thrilled to the point that every time my patients are seeing, as you saw today too, I do so many more diagnostics on you after surgery. Sure. So I can share with other surgeons as I teach all over the world that these, are, these things are possible. So keratoconus, if you look at it, Jack, to me, it's not just a disease, it's also an optical problem. So the way I did your eyes, for example, or I would approach anybody, and it doesn't matter how extreme the cone is, like in your case, the astigmatism was over 12 diopters. It doesn't matter. First, stabilize the cornea. Now, there are various ways to do that. Once you've reached an age of over 20 years and everything's stable, there is laser techniques I do on specific cones, not LASIK. Again, people constantly get confused not LASIK, there are laser corneoplastic techniques that can be done for patients. There are certain criteria I have for that, high astigmatism, certain thicknesses, and they can actually come straight to 2020. Then you may cross-link them if you feel they're changing, or you just monitor them and see if they're moving at all. Second, you can put in intact segments, which are, if done ingeniously and artistically, like we did at you, it actually corrects. I've done a patient recently, 23 diopter astigmatism. Again, none of this is guaranteed, but these are the ways you approach it then that intact can be combined with, if needed, cross-linking in the future, or residual astigmatism on top of intact can be done with laser corneoplasty. Now, you take a patient with keratoconus who's extremely nearsighted, you can put an ICL in the eye. It's an intraocular contact lens. If the patient is over 60, you can do a lens exchange surgery, meaning you take out their early cataract, put in a toric lens implant. Sounds vaguely familiar. Yes, you had that in your left eye. <laughs> so that's the other thing. And then there are no limits, I say, to the combinations. For example, a patient I did from Switzerland recently, I did an intact surgery first, stabilized her cone. Then I had a flyback three to four months later and I put it a toric lens in. Try, try. Another patient I did, uh, I think Germany recently was, I put an intact and then I put an ICL as a surgeon. Try, try. We did another patient firefighter, again, maybe last week, yes, Jared. Uh, I did a cross-linking first because he was changing a little, even though he was 30 years old. So I stabilized him and a month later did laser surgery on him. Laser corneoplastic, a non-cutting technique. It's 20, 20, in fact, he sees great at night. So there are no limits to the combination. In fact, the patient you saw today leaving, uh, who's now a pastor, he had 12 complications of keratoconus surgeries that were done on him. He had intacts, he had laser, he had cross-linking, he had uh, ICL, um, PRK, he had so many techniques and failed and went to 2400. 
Not only is it important to plan the surgeries and plan it in a, what I call a GPS way, meaning you should know the direction. You can't just do surgery and then hope it lands somewhere. So in his case, I had to reverse all those surgeries. So I left his intact and cross-linking in place, removed his ICL and his early cataract, put in a toric lens and did laser on top, he's 2020. So it's very important that for people who are watching this and Jack, absolutely my pleasure, my time is always available to share because I feel the pain of keratoconus patients and there's too much wrong going on outside of people just cross-linking them. Now let's talk about cross-linking. It is not a new technology, it's been around for 16 years. I've been doing it abroad for so many years, it got approved in the US recently. But cross-linking is like putting, think of your cornea in keratoconus as a bent back, okay? We call it kyphosis. Now if you have a bent back jack, see how this sounds now. I have a new cement I'm gonna put on your bent back so it doesn't bend anymore. Right. Well, great, but you've bent, you've locked it where it's at. Wrong. That's exactly right. So you've locked my bent back, and I'm now maimed forever. Instead, correct my back and then cross-link it. So that's my teachings to surgeons and patients who come to us dis in despair. Doctor, my I went to so and so place. They did cross-linking, and now I'm blinded. I can't see. Obviously, because cross-linking just kept you in that position. So again, nothing wrong with the technology or the technique, but its application was wrong. You use it when a person is changing or, like in your case, I've not mm -hmm. done it yet, but once I have locked your vision at 2020, now I will cross-link you if you move. Hence, you're coming back in October for me to evaluate. So, I hope people are getting a gist of this. It's not the technique, technology that is good or bad, the logic of how to use what in keratoconus. There are over 25 techniques, close to 48 combinations. So think about it. If you're over 20 years of age and stable, you have the opportunity to see and you do not have to despair. Now let's go further into keratoconus. People with scars of very extremely thin corneas, like 200 microns, let's take it. Extreme astigmatism, everything. Well, you can first again use an intact with combination with cross-linking or do laser or put ICL or put a toric lens inside. Or you can do a lamellar surgery like that surgeon I did recently, which you saw mm -hmm. while you were here. So I did lamellar surgery, shaved off the top of his cornea did not do a full transplant, never. I'm totally against doing a full transplant because that, it just takes your quality of life away. You're, you're shortcoming all your opportunities in life. I'm a transplant surgeon, so I do not want a penetrating transplant or a full transplant for you. In fact, we do a layer transplant level. Rehab is literally a month or two. Now I have not only corrected your center scar, but added tissue to your cornea, made you stronger for future laser of a future cataract if you're over 60, of a future ICL if you're less than 60. So many ways to correct you. Basically, your keratoconus is an optical error. As long as you are stable, no matter what your thickness, there is a technique for you. Again, don't fall into these brackets. Oh, I'm thin, 450, 420 microns. I can't have LASIK or I can't have... Incorrect. Think about it. It's all relative. Who is a tall person? Who is a short person? It's relative. Abnormal is gigant, giants and dwarfs. That's abnormal. So keratoconus is a pathology in a way, but it's visually correctable. And for cases where after the surgeon has done the least interventional techniques like I discussed, you can still wear a specialty contact lens or a scleral contact lens and come to even perfect vision. But to just go into a contact without being corrected is like, having, is like leaving a broken bone and putting crutches and going about life. Now, you can surely walk with the crutches, but you're still disabled without the crutch. And your broken bone is deteriorating over time. So my logic with keratoconus is very simple, Jack, as you know. Fix the problem to the best with the least interventional surgery or surgical steps. And you can top it off with a specialty contact lens for even better vision if you want. But don't leave it and put it in a crutch or cross-link it and stop it forever. Wrong. Correct the problem visually. Make the patient see. And it's an extra thrill for me when all of you guys come out with 2020 without glasses and contact. But like I said, Jack, that's never my guarantee to you or to any patient. No, but the can't. fight should be relentless because I am just proving that over 21 years of doing these techniques and having patients of such high IQ from all over the world, my excitement shows in the way I speak. And that's why we don't even advertise. But it's a pleasure to share with you all patients Please give your doctors a chance. Do not relegate yourself to despair. There are so many techniques, combinations, and all safe. 
and there are other backup options but you can see it no need to despair jack i gave another lecture looks like this uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's everything you need that is keratoconus it is treatable you can see i can see you right there hi <laughs> so you know this despair stuff that's got to go away that that's got to go away get it done Jack, safe flight back to Abu Dhabi. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Look after the eye and I'll see you back in October. Very okay? good.